I know. special video for my brother. Uh, he's been inquiring about bluegill cleaning and tonight's the night. So first of all, cutting board. Uh, I have a big Bubba fillet knife that I also have a steel here, which I knocked, the, knocked any burrs off that might be on it. <clears throat> Pretty much all you need to do. Have a container here that I'm gonna put water in and my hose here, which Fill this up with a little bit of water. Once I have a little bit of water in there, then uh, I can rinse any of the meat and stuff as I go through. Uh, this will strictly be for the rough rinse. Uh, when I get all the meat finished, I will rinse it all really, really thorough. And at that point, I will take it inside and we will put it in clean water inside and uh, add salt to it. Also, I have uh, the bucket that has the fish in it. You can see the fish. And then I have a bucket here holding my light and also uh, will be where I throw the remainders of the fish. So let's get started. All right. Let's see. I don't have a preference as to which side. I just grab them, take and, and get right underneath that, that black gill there, the blue gill, holding them in place. Just yeah, a mosquito bit me. Hold him in place and then see if I can get this in the light. Gotta have a sharp knife, that's for sure. You just cut down a few times and then you take and you go. This is where a lot of people try to go this way. It's really hard to do it that way. This is the way to do it. You stick it in there and you can feel that backbone. And you go on down and you can feel them bones and then, and then you punch through. As you see there. And then you just slowly go down, leave a little bit hanging. Then you take and you pull it up a little with your thumb. And you slowly just start whittling away at it. Bugs are terrible tonight. And this is the part you were talking about, I'm sure, that uh, gives you a little bit of trouble. Cut that back, and then you just go right down those ribs. And if you get a little bit of bone in there, it's okay. You can clean that up at the end. So I get it so far, and then I just finally just get where I just cut right on through there. And then you just fold it over. Get it in there, and as you can see, my knife has some flex to it. Cut that off. And then what I usually do is come back and clean it up. I got a little bit of fin there. Throw that away. And turn it around. And you can feel some bone in there. Got a little bit there more than I want. Bone right there. Okay, and then if you do that, you rinse it a little bit, and then you can you can feel there's always gonna. I've never been able to not get these right here. So what I do is I just take a cut a little bit right there, cut a little bit right there, cut a little bit right there. And now, now it's good to go. They are. It's completely boneless now. You have no no bones in there. Turn it over on the other side. This is usually the easiest for a right-handed person because it just is. Something like that. And down, you can feel the bone and then you push through. And you just run it right down the back. Take this guy here. 
You can also do this too. You can just take and run that knife down there a few times. You lose a little bit of that belly meat, it ain't that much for what you're getting off the rest of it here. And if you're like me and you love the taste of bluegill, it doesn't get much better than this. Alright, let's see where we're at now. We'll take the fish, drop them in the bucket, and I feel I got those little bitty bones, bones in there, which are almost near impossible not yet. Cut that piece off. It's not worth trying to just nitpick. Just get rid of it because you got a whole nice piece there. Okay. That was a decent size one. Let's see. Here's, here's another pretty good size one here. Real quick. Alright. Same difference. Same deal. Not, but add a little bit more light to it. Go right down that backbone, and you can feel the bones in there. Push through right behind its butthole. Sorry, but that's what it is. You come up here, and you just run that knife down through there. Got to get a grip on it there. They had a body cam that would be a lot better able to see a lot more the good news is when you do it like this you don't have to deal with any guts or anything and when you fry it like I said when you fry it, you get nothing but meat, boneless meat. Mm. That almost feels like it's. No, oh, they're in there. One set of bone right inside there. And you can feel them. Observatory in an operating room. You think? I said I'm in the observing. Room. Well, I've got the camera set up, so I'm, I'm recording now. See? Not too dark to film it? No. Is that the light that you were looking for earlier? The only bad thing is, is I wish I had a body cam because you can't really see, like, this is the angle I wish I had. Yeah. All right, I'm going back to work now. All right. All right. It helps too to, once you pull that meat off there, get rid of this fish. And then you can you can feel that that bony section. It's all good. Now I'm gonna do one. I got one small, small guy in here. This guy's probably the smallest one of the bunch, so I'm gonna do him for you next. Because I'm sure you know. Oh yeah, it's easy to do those big ones. But as you can see, it's it's equally 
you can feel that bone. I'm feeling it, and then punch through, go right down that spine, stop right there, stick it in there, rake it a few times, and you'll you'll feel those bones in there. And then you can lift it up. Now some of the guys on the internet I've seen will take and cut all the way down, but I don't do that. A little bit more than I don't want to mess with. Uh, oh yeah, I pulled that off there. It also helps to be over closer to the edge where your knife's not being hit by the truck. Hit by a truck. Ooh, how awful. that piece off there and there's them bones them bones them bones and that's that's the difference in the <laughs> As you can see, there's there's a little bit of difference, uh, you know, quite a bit of difference. Uh, here's the, probably the next smallest one I have. So, I mean, you get a little bit of meat off of it. It's not bad. And I don't know if you notice what I'm doing here, but I'm cleaning these on the back of my tailgate, which works out really good for me. I like that because it cleans right off. Black Beauty is a wonderful baby. She pulls our house around and she's fun to drive and she makes an awesome cleaning station. A laying station. Yeah, this is this is where it gets a little trickier because we got a smaller fish. You gotta just get a hold of it. That's the hardest part, just getting a hold of it and raking it. Kind of a sharp knife, which my knife's not the, the sharpest in the world, but it's pretty sharp. Bring it out. Unfortunately, you don't get to see any catfish getting done tonight because I didn't catch any catfish tonight. Another thing about it is, I mean, there's probably faster ways of doing it, but I can clean these. I can feel the bones in them, you know, just take a little extra time.
my water. everything again make sure I didn't miss anything it's a little more coarse at this point it's easier to fill any bones that might be left behind or any little stragglers like that right there this is when you want to clean all your meat up make it ready to eat that way when you fix it you don't have to worry about choking on a bone or getting caught in your throat or sticking to your gum So there it is. That was the eight fish that I caught tonight. <laughs>